Hello, I want to start by giving all glory and thanksgiving, honor, praise, and worship to the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> and by um, his power of the Holy Spirit, give a word for the year 2021. For Jesus is son of the most high God and Jesus is son of the living God. And I just want to outline what <laughs> the year 2021 will look like for believers and for the worldwide. <laughs> and so we're going to start. If you want to name the year <laughs> or this message, it is the year of conquest. And just an outline of what 2020 was in preparation for 2021, which is end time global harvest and end time revival in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So we're going to ground ourselves in the word of God being Romans 8.28. So Romans 8.28 says that, and we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God to them who are called the called according to his purpose and so i want to put out there 2020 was an amazing year and it was perfect for us in preparation for the move of god for 2021 this is through the revival um, of the end times and global harvest with the lord trying to draw as many souls to the kingdom of God as possible. And before revival, there is a great purging <laughs> and a great cleansing, cleansing and a great pruning that took place in 2020. And with this preparation, we saw that there was a return to biblical truth and um, reading the Bible, a return to prayer, a return to the presence of God and hearing his voice and a return to families and a return to the basics of seeking the face of God, humbling ourselves, repenting from all sin, transgression, and iniquity, and just a casting out of everything that wasn't of him. And so this leads us into 2021 and into the end time global harvest to do the works of the Holy Spirit and to do the works of the Great Commission to go out. And this is how we're going to end as well. Uh, Matthew 28, go out to all nations, making disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so what this end time global harvest looks like practically is a great outpouring of the gifts. Um, but first, we had to have a year being grounded in the word of God so that we can move. And there's going to be such an ease um, to the believer um, when it comes to revival. We will be carriers of his glory. We will be carriers of his presence. We will be carriers of worship everywhere that we go. And this is in the marketplace this is in our um, work arenas where our co-workers this is in our families this is in our dorms and our schools everywhere that we go as we just are altars and as we are just priests as we are just ambassadors for christ we will see revival repentance victory deliverance and restoration everywhere that we go and so this is the outpouring of the holy spirit and so how do we get in alignment with the Lord? How do we bear fruit? How do we do the greater works um, that he has laid out for us? And how does this end time global harvest look like? And end time revival looks like for us um, individually. So we're going to go to Matthew 6, 33. So that's the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. I want to say this one more time. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. And so 
what 2021 looks like is a return to the great commission and a return to seeking first the kingdom of god and all these things being added unto you so we do not want to create plans <laughs> and go off of ideas of intellect we want to go off of ideas of revival um in short revelation and wisdom and so this comes from prayer and bible study the lord will lead us the lord will lead you individually how to engage in the great revival what to do what we do not want <laughs> is in short have human understanding of i'm going to i'm going to, i'm going to start this ministry i'm going to start this business i'm going to do these plans that came before 2020 and became and came before 2021 we want revelation and wisdom coming from the word of god reading your bible coming in prayer coming in humility repenting that no sin transgression or iniquity is messing up the way that you are hearing and the way you're interpreting the bible but also you're receiving from the spirit of god and so when it comes to the end time global harvest the lord wants all the glory he wants all the worship he wants all the honor he wants all the praise and we need to be able to just seek and ask the lord just saying jesus son of the most high god what would you have for me and he's going to lead you to a, a specific scripture and from these um scriptures and from this revelation um through the gift of prophecy and just his word um, because prophecy is the highest gift it says um seek the spiritual gifts that are the most high uh, from the most high god um that we can go and in, out into all the world making disciples and so that is in short phase one and when it comes to this uh, phase one in in short seeking him what does this look like for us practically this comes from first thessalonians 1 uh, verse 3 remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our lord jesus christ in the sight of god and our uh, father knowing brethren beloved your election of god for our gospel came not unto you in word only but also in power in the holy ghost in much assurance as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake so the church the great revival the body of christ as coming in 2021 is no longer in word only it's in manifestation it is in fruit it is in revival in miracles signs and wonders being grounded in the word of god the bible is perfected prophecy anything that you need in this life anything that you want anything that you are praying for interceding for souls for family for friends for generations for nations for countries is in the bible it's in the spirit of revelation and we're no longer just going to come in word um, but we're going to come in power we're going to come in fruit just like first thessalonians lays out for us and so it comes with three components it's going to come in deliverance revival and victory and so how does this look like practically in our life and how it looks like in our everyday will come from first corinthians 14. and first corinthians 14 lays out prophecy this is a prophetic word that we're hearing right now and so first corinthians 14 says by verse 3 but he that prophesies speaketh unto men to edification through I mean, uh, <laughs> exhortation and through comfort and so that is three stages of the three components of revival revival has three components deliverance victory and restoration so jesus came into the world to give us life and life more abundantly so how do we engage in spiritual warfare through exhortation 
Um, actually, let's start with edification. Um, edification means to build up. So when you're seeking the Lord, saying, Jesus, Son of the Most High God, what will you have from me? Son of the living God, he will begin to reveal how are you building up the body of Christ and how are you serving um, the ministry? How are you serving? And again, this doesn't come through just ideas of Lord, I could do this. I could do this. No, no, no. The Lord is going to ground you in the scripture, in the word of God, through a book of the Bible, a chapter of the Bible, even a verse, wherever your faith has measured. And you will seek him in word and prayer and wait on him and he will reveal. And as you begin to, again, seek first the kingdom of God, not the things that God can do for you, but his heart. His heart is for revival. His heart is for repentance. He wants people to not be lost, but come and become sons of God. Come and no longer be children of the devil or darkness, but come into the marvelous light, which is Christ Jesus. And so this is a great commission. The Lord wants us to win souls for his glory. And so while we're seeking him, how are we building up? the body of Christ? How are we building up the bride? How are we building up the church? But also, how are we winning souls to the kingdom of God? So this is edification. And this is through um, the gifts, signs, and wonders of the spiritual gifts. And I do want to lay out the spiritual gifts. And this comes from 1 Corinthians 12. Um, now concerning spiritual gifts, <laughs> brethren, that... Um, brethren i would not have you ignorant you know that ye are were gentiles carried away um, unto these dumb idols even ye are led wherefore i give unto you under, um, to understand that no man speaketh by the spirit of god calleth jesus a curse and that no man can say jesus is lord but by the holy ghost now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit withal. For to one is given by the spirit of I mean, the spirit, the word of wisdom to another, the word of knowledge by the same spirit to another faith by the same spirit to another, the gifts of healing by the same spirit to another, the working of miracles to another prophecy to another discerning of spirits to another diverse kinds of tongues to another interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh the one and the self-same spirit dividing to every man severely as he will. For as the body is one and hath many members, all the members of the one body being many are one body. So also is Christ. But by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jew or Gentiles, whether we be bound or free and have been all made to drink in one spirit. So what it's saying here is that the gifts of the spirit, the Lord wants all the body of Christ to work on one accord, having the baptism of the Holy Spirit being the baptism of fire. He wants all of us to be carriers of his glory, all of us to be carriers of his presence. And so as we're going out into all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, he's going to equip us with spiritual gifts. These spiritual gifts are like a pocket knife. Um, they can do different things. And what the functionality is of it is that wherever the moment calls for, the Lord will grace you for this thing. The grace of God is going to be upon carriers. I mean, <laughs> well, we're ambassadors. We're carriers of his glory. We are fellow laborers with Christ Jesus. And so when we go out into all the world, going out into the school, into the gym, gas plate, I mean, gas stations, school, um, stores, wherever we meet individuals, we're going to be able to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this is why we had to read our Bibles and get back in prayer and intercession for 2020, because the Lord wants us to go out 
and preach the gospel of the word of God. And the Bible is perfected prophecy. So anything we pray, anything we say, any um, words of knowledge, any words of wisdom, anything where we come to prayer of healing, we have by edification by exhortation, telling people how to move, how to get right with the Lord, how to repent. Um, the gospel is the gospel of reconciliation, reconciling all men and all women back to the Father. And so the Lord wants us to move in this arena and not in word only, but manifestation and in power that we bear fruit, that um, as we just pray for people, um, they will be healed. Um, these are the signs that will follow all of those who believe. We are Christians. We are followers of Christ. We are disciples. We are little Christ. <laughs> um, these are the signs that will follow them. They will be able to baptize um, in my name. They will be able to cast out demons. <laughs> um, they will be able to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. They will be able to drink um, poisonous things and... Um, they will not be affected. They will be able to uh, get bit by vipers and scorpions and nothing will phase them. So when we're going out and we're hearing of the spirit of God, this should be our presence in our workplace, in our homes, as we gather together and being hospitable to unbelievers and people who are not Christians, all people of other religions and faith, and they will begin to repent confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and turn away. And so um, with this edification, with this power, with this glory that we're carrying, um, we are building up the body. We are building up um, unbelievers to repent and become Christians and become followers of uh, Jesus Christ <laughs> and begin to just move um, as he will. And so the first um, component of this prophecy is edification building up, but the second component is exhortation. So this comes from um, prayer, intercession, thanksgiving, um, petition. And so when you're encountering your coworkers, your family, um, strangers that you do not know, you have to know that the word of God will couple anything that you say or have faith in and believe for. And so any business venture, any um, evangelism that we do, the word will ground us. The Lord will tell us what, what to say in that moment, but also will give you a Bible chapter and a Bible scripture to pair with that thing. And so what this looks like practically is that we come to prayer it says um in philippians 4 be anxious for nothing but prayer supplication thanksgiving make your petitions known unto god and the peace that surpasses under all understanding will come unto you and so the lord will tell you how to win souls how to evangelize how to be a business person how to serve in your church and then a word from the Lord will be coupled with his scripture because the word of God is perfected prophecy. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. So Jesus is the Bible. And so when it is coupled with um, the Bible, you have to pray into this thing. And so again, we hear prophetic words all the time, but how do we <laughs> get the footwork behind it? How do we join our faith with the word because Hebrews 11 faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen we need evidence we need fruit we don't need uh, all these prayers and prophecies that never happen we need it to happen and so how does it happen it's going to happen first by Thanksgiving so this is why this video is coming out in this time because um, this is we just came out of Thanksgiving, um, the holiday, but also giving thanks for Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us being Christmas, just a day of celebration. And the Lord wants Thanksgiving to forever um, be in our mouth, to forever be in our praise. And so when it comes to praise, how do you praise appropriately and how do you praise accurately? Um, praise 
is giving thanks for God for who he is. And so we need to have postures of prayer, postures of thanksgiving by thanking the Lord for who he is. For the Lord is consistent. Um, he is God who is, um, was, is, and forever will be. And so uh, we have to be grateful and thankful for what God has already done. A grateful and a pr appreciative heart um, is not always asking for more. The Lord has done enough. And so when we have not thanked him appropriately for his blessing, for covering, we're alive. And our names are written in the Lamb's book of life and have salvation. When we begin to praise him, to honor him, to worship him and power and truth and authority and dominion, that's when breakthrough comes. That's when revival comes. This is um, the order. This is the patterns of God in the way that um, we move um, <laughs> in his way. So add thanksgiving to your everyday worship add thanksgiving to your everyday prayer add thanksgiving to your everyday bible study and your when you gather together where the spirit of the lord is um there is liberty uh, where two or more are gathered in my name i am in the midst <laughs> and so when we praise jesus appropriately in his name for who he is in thanksgiving then we see the manifestations of God. When we praise and thank um, God accurately, we'll find that there's more breakthroughs, there's more manifestations, and we give thanks. But not only for remembrance, because um, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, we do not love our life unto death. And so as we are just loving the Lord, um, it's a throne. It says, Come to the throne of grace, Bold, boldly come to the throne of grace, um, that you may obtain, obtain mercy, knowing that the Lord hears us. And so this is how we give thanks for um, who he is and what he has already done. Not seeking God's hand in anything, um, being begrudging or murmuring, but um, seeking his heart and his face and his countenance to shine upon us. Um, and so... We also thank the Lord in thanksgiving for what he says in his word, but also what he says in his prophetic word. And we give thanks, and this is how we partner in prayer and prophecy, by what he says he's going to do. And we hold steadfast on that word, um, on his name, his character, and just his goodness. And so as we continue, we cannot be faithless. For it says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. For you must believe that he is. God is the I am. This is his character. This is his name. This is his nature. But he is also a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So when we get a prophetic word, when we get um, revelation, we get wisdom, we need to um, sit and know that um, Jesus is God, Jesus is the Son of God, and Jesus um, has come in the flesh. And so as he comes in the flesh and has, we need to thank him for how he's showing up in breakthrough, in revelation, in his teaching. How do we access God? How do we access the grace of God? How do we access the glory of God, the presence of God in revival, in every situation, um, through every evangelism, in every divine encounter, through every person that is called forth towards us. Every blessing called forth towards us. And we thank him before the manifestation and we thank him after the manifestation because that's one thing the lord is disappointed with <laughs> um just like when the lord healed the 10 lepers only one came back to thank god and so when the lord is doing all these things known and unknown forgiving our sins none and none and <laughs> known and unknown we have to give him an appropriate thanksgiving, an appropriate offering. And so that is the first component of revival, thanksgiving, and remembering Jesus um, at this time of thanksgiving and this time of Christmas leading into 2021. 
So the second component is worship. And so I want to break down worship to appropriately teach what worship is, um, especially to Americans or to people who are Western, who have lost the meaning of worship in English. So worship in its original form has three meanings and it's purity. First, it means to adore. The Lord wants us to adore him appropriately. And this is by humbling ourselves. And this can come through loving God through gifts. This is through our tithes and offerings. This can come through um, words of affirmation. This can come through our prayers, our intercessions. Um, this can come through our thanksgiving, our, um, our singing, um, whatever. This can come through acts of service, us joining together um, from our spiritual headship and getting under authority to help those in need, um, to be hospitable, to seek uh, first the kingdom of God um, and help the least of these. This can come through um, quality time, how we just dwell with him for the Lord has fellowship with us in communion with us. So it's <laughs> acts of service or, or, or physical touch. And this goes um, into uh, just loving on the Lord. And this also comes to the second form of worship. Um, the word worship means to kiss hands. And when it comes to physical touch, there are postures of worship. There are postures of prayer. And the Lord wants us to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God that we will be exalted in due season when the Lord sees fit. And so when it comes to postures of prayer, um, especially Western people and especially Americans, um, and this comes from the last meaning of the word worship. Um, worship means to lay prostrate and on your face before the Lord. Right. And so you see this all throughout the Bible. The Bible lays out that to worship God, not even to worship God, all the amazing men and women of God. Anytime they were in the presence of God, anytime they were in the glory of God, anytime the Lord showed up, they fell down and worshiped him. And so this is what the Lord wants. Proper postures of prayer, pop, proper postures of worship. And he wants us to lay, I am telling you, lay as low as you can on the ground, on your belly, on your face on and just seek the lord all right so the revelation is going to come from us worshiping humbly and repenting uh that was another thing of 2020 is that revival <laughs> has cleansing before it has repentance before it so the church the body of christ had um to repent to prepare for the glory to prepare for the manifestations to prepare for the realm and for the authority dominion that we're going to be operating in and so the last part when it comes to edification exhortation and comfort <laughs> um this is the comfort that this is how we're going to be moving. We're going to be moving in power. We're going to be moving in glory. We're going to be moving in dominion and authority and just conquest every realm, um, especially when it comes to his marvelous light. He says, uh, you are a peculiar people, a chosen generation, a, a royal priesthood. <laughs> and we're going to be leading people into their into his marvelous light and so just get into alignment get into proper postures get into proper seeking of the lord to partner um with him because um these spiritual giftings the every 
the every man because the Lord is no respecter of persons. Um, people that have no, um, in short, no office or no um, title or no position um, in church, you're just serving. The Lord um, practically is saying that first it's going to come through thanksgiving. It's going to come through worship and praise um, and honoring the Lord. But it's going to come also through um, service. How are we uh, moving? How are we evangelizing? How are we winning souls for the Great Commission? And how are we moving towards revival? And so, in short, this is where I just want to end <laughs> with Matthew 28 about just how we're going to be moving in this end time global harvest. For it says in the Bible that the harvest is plenty and the laborers are few. Pray to the God of the harvest that he sends the laborers. So what he's saying is that this end time global harvest, this end time revival, and this year of conquest, every there, everywhere that we go in the um, realm of the spirit, everywhere that we go in the realm of family, everywhere that we go in the realm of friends, um, everywhere that we go in the realm of finance and business, um, schooling, wherever. We're going to take back territories and there's just going to be a generational wealth when it comes to souls, when it comes to riches, when it comes to glory, when it comes to revelation, when it comes to wisdom, when it comes to family, when it comes to evangelism. We're just going to be conquesting every territory, every every country every nation because <laughs> 2020 everywhere everyone experienced 2020 <laughs> and so we are going to experience 2021 intimately and corporately just like how we experienced 2020 and so this goes to revelate i mean not revelations go to revelations it's an amazing book with a promise on it but it goes to matthew 28 when it comes to the Great Commission. And verse 17. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. Again, worship. Do not doubt. Do not murmur. This is amazing. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven in earth. Go ye, therefore, and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. So this is the Great Commission that we as believers, we as Christians, we are going out into all nations making disciples and teaching them that Jesus is coming back. Everyone who is not Christian, everyone of other faiths and religions, that those are false gods, false idols, and even the body of Christ, we have built up false gods and false idols, but we need to teach the people of the ways of God, teach people of his spirit, teach them of um, their survival, being carriers and priests and prophets, <laughs> a, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, <laughs> carriers of his glory. Every place that we go in, we have conquest. Every place that we go in, we have victory. Every place we go in, we have deliverance. Every place that we go in, we have revival and restoration. And so this is the love that we move in, that the love of the Father comes into every home, comes into every place a Christian is at. We open our mouth, we speak, we tell them the truth of the gospel. We prophesy, we pray and petition. And when we pray, when we evangelize, we give thanks to the Lord. We cast out demons in the name of Jesus and they are gone and we give thanks to the Lord. Um, and I'm at, I'm at peace. <laughs> I believe that's everything the Lord wants me to say. And so, um, I am partnering, um, with you, um, for everything that I've said, um, will yield 30 fold, 60 fold, a hundred fold in souls in kingdoms in territories 
and blessings and finances, wherever the Lord is unctioning your heart in healing in deliverance in freedom and liberty in peace uh, for where the spirit of the Lord is, there is love, joy, peace, patience, meekness, gentleness, faithfulness, goodness, kindness. This is the fruit of the spirit. This is the power of God. Um, so go in peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, thank you, Lord. Amen. Hello. Thanks for watching The Blessing Report at theblessingreport.com. And if you would like to partner with us as we continue to make good family friendly Christian content, make sure to become a subscriber at theblessingreport.com where you can be a monthly or a weekly donator, or you can make a one time donation in the description box below or the link in our bio. And if you purchase from theblessingreport.com slash shop, a portion of your proceeds goes to help fund our productions when you buy from our Christian clothing. And if you'd like to partner with us as we move towards our feature-led film and our TV series, make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and turn on your bell notifications where we have new videos and podcasts every Wednesday and Sunday, so come back next week. Thank you so much for your love and support. Make sure to check out a playlist, subscribe, and watch another video. God bless.